Seabrook. It is basketball night in the capital city. Hello, everybody. I am Birch Antley, along with the captain, Kerry Rich. Kerry, South Carolina head coach Frank Martin with another season opening win. As Carolina knocked off USC Upstate on Tuesday night behind a huge night from their freshman, Keyshawn Bryant. <laughs> Keyshawn Bryant brings a tremendous amount of athleticism and energy. And I thought he changed the complexion of the game once he entered the game Tuesday night against USC Upstate. He's quickly become a crowd favorite, and I can't wait to see him get on the floor tonight. That stat line for Keyshawn Bryant, pretty impressive. 21 points, 8 of 12 shooting, 5 of 7 from the free throw line, 7 rebounds, and an assist, all for the 6'6 freshman out of Winter Haven, Florida. And he had a huge dunk, two of them, a matter of fact, Gary, to really energize this crowd Tuesday night. Well, it brings a different level of athleticism. I was able to get over to a practice early in the preseason and to a man, they all talked about uh, how quickly he was transitioning. They knew he, they were getting an athlete, but certainly he's become a really good basketball player very quick. Head coach Frank Martin for South Carolina, undefeated in home openers. Meanwhile, Jeff Bowles on the other side for Stony Brook out of the America East Conference. They're picked to finish fourth in a very tough America East, and they down George Washington 77-74. Their first game out, a 22-point deficit they overcame, and that's the biggest come from behind win in school history. Yeah, it certainly speaks to their fight. It speaks to their resilience. To be able to come down from uh, 22 points and get it done in overtime certainly speaks to who they are as a basketball team. It is Chris Silva in the center circle on the tip, and it is controlled by Stony Brook is Latimer, Miles Latimer, dishes off to Jaron Cornish, the 5'11 senior out of the Bahamas. Stony Brook returning three of their top four scorers from a season ago, including the America East Rookie of the Year, number three, Elijah Olanai, who scored 18 points and had 10 rebounds, a double-double in that win against George Washington in their season opener. Olanai was huge in the comeback win against George Washington, looking for him to certainly try to impact this game early on in Columbia tonight. Latimer with a head fake, takes the jumper too strong. Rebound, trying to be collected by Coatser, and it's a shot clock violation. Possession over to the Gamecocks. Carolina in the white, Stony Brook in the red. There's Mike Coatser, who had sort of a, a humdrum game for Mike Coatser. Six points, seven rebounds, three steals in the Gamecock season opener. A lot has been said about the newcomers, but Mike Kosar, his reemergence uh, this year certainly is going to be uh, a big, big part of how South Carolina plays for the rest of the year. Foul on Miles Latimer, the 6'3 freshman out of Fairfax, Virginia, his first. As you see the starting five for the Gamecocks, bottom of your screen. A.J. Lawson, Trey Campbell, the two guards with Justin Minaya, Mike Kosar, and Chris Silva. Chris Silva, the preseason all SEC player for South Carolina who had a double-double his first time out this year. And the majority of his points, Chris Silva garnered from the free throw line. Manaya with the rebound off the Stony Brook miss. Penetration there for Mike Coatser. That's what I like to see from Mike Kosar. Again, we talked so much about the newcomers, but for this team to have any type of success this year, Mike Kosar has to be uh, that 12 to 13 point game, uh, seven to eight rebounds. It has to do it consistently. Got to be active on the glass, but also making aggressive moves like we just saw him make a few moments ago. Kosar was 0 for 1 at the line against USC Upstate. Sinks his first shot here to put Carolina on the board, one to nothing. Just underway here from the Colonial Life Arena. This game is part of the Hall of Fame tip-off. Second shot rattles out. And it is Gamecocks basketball. Good scramble there. Good scramble early on by both teams, and uh, it was good to see South Carolina play with that type of aggression. I thought against USC Upstate the other night, uh, they settled for too many early jump shots, but now uh, Justin Manaya, Chris Silva, Justin Manaya needs to get going, didn't get uh, many good looks Tuesday night. We'll see whether he can get going tonight. Manaya being guarded by Latimer, whips it over A.J. Lawson, the freshman out of Toronto, Canada.
Shot clock dips below 10. Campbell drives in. And the rebound is taken down by Akwasi Yeboa, the 6'6 redshirt junior America East preseason all-conference player out of England. Fresh shot clock here for Stony Brook, the Seawolves. And a travel whistled on Yeboa. And the Seawolves, sir, that they'll be opportunistic in terms of trying to force tempo and get some easy opportunities in transition. But they want to be somewhat methodical. We'll shoot the three when given the opportunity. But certainly they're going to try to be really strategic when it comes to attacking that stingy South Carolina defense. A.J. Lawson kick out Trey Campbell. Campbell for three, and there it is, the first three-pointer of the year. After the Gamecocks went 0 for 18 from the three-point line against USC Upstate, they hit their first try here tonight. 0 for 18, and I'm happy to see Trey Campbell uh, the transfer point guard, so much has been made about how good will he be, how uh, or whether or not he'll be able to take the keys. And uh, they went 0 for 18, and it wasn't an issue with them missing 18. I thought they took good shots. Fortunately, one got one to go early tonight. You said they were good rhythm shots. They were good rhythm shots, and I think anytime you have good rhythm shots, the coaches don't worry about that. Those are the shots that you practice. As long as the confidence doesn't impact how they play on the other end, they're okay. And it was a season opener. It was a season opener. And we saw a lot of nerves, a lot of jitters, and hopefully we'll see some of those uh, things dissipate tonight. So South Carolina with an early lead, 4-0. It's Stony Brook basketball with 17-20 to play. Shot clock at 5, now at 4. And another shot clock violation. I thought that was really good perimeter defense by the Gamecocks. I, I'm noticing uh, that they are doing just a tad bit more uh, switching on the perimeter because they have some guys that are versatile, some guys that can play multiple positions. And uh, we saw how this benefited them just a few moments ago, being able to switch on the perimeter certainly sped Stony Brook up. Three turnovers now that South Carolina has forced Stony Brook into. And South Carolina did a good job on that perimeter defense against USC Upstate on Tuesday night. They forced the Spartans into three or four shot clock violations, especially in the second half. Well, that's always been the staple of a Frank Martin coach right. basketball team. When you talk about uh, their identity and who they are, you know who they're going to be defensively. They're going to be really stingy, uh, very physical. And this year, because of that athleticism and that length on the perimeter, you mentioned Bryant, A.J. Lawson is another 6'6 freshman. So now it kind of reminds you of the, the, the composition of how the team looked a few years ago that made it to the Final Four. When you had a 6'5", Thornwell on the wing, 6'7", Dozier on the wing, you're seeing a lot of that right now. That's how Frank wants to play. He wants to make it really, really difficult for you to make any type of entry pass that's going to allow you to initiate offense. If you come to play basketball for Frank Martin, it's defense first. Defense first, and I would argue that it's toughness first and then defense. <laughs> Along with a little tough skin, too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so South Carolina with an early lead here in the first period, 17-13 remaining. As you see Cocky warming up the crowd, 4 to nothing, Gamecocks. And our officials taking a look at that last possession for Stony Brook. It looked to indeed be a shot clock violation. Two fouls for Stony Brook, none for South Carolina as the Gamecocks lead 4-0. Stony Brook 1-0 after finishing last year 13-19. They lost to a very good Vermont team in the semifinal of the American East Conference Tournament. Expecting some good things this year out of Stony Brook, especially in the America East. Foul whistled on Jeff O'Cherry, the 6'11 sophomore out of the Bronx, his second. Check it, his first foul, second team foul. And, Birch, we talked a lot about the 18 three-pointers that were missed Tuesday night. Uh, nothing else, you can tell there's a concerted effort to make sure you get plays and opportunities inside the paint as they're doing everything they can to get Chris over the basketball. Driving in on Justin Benaya. Rebound falls to Latimer as he keeps it alive. Fresh shot clock here for Stony Brook, trailing four to nothing. <laughs> Foul on Mike Coatser, his first. <laughs> hey. 
And there's a jumper on it for Yaboa. Akwasi Yaboa out of Chigwell in England. Cuts that lead in half now. Four to two Gamecocks. Mike Kotzer picks up his second foul early. And I think it's fair to say that he's not going to uh, be holding hands singing Kumbaya with Frank Martin as he makes <laughs> his way to the bench. <laughs> I believe that's a good assessment there, Captain. Yeah. So Felipe Hase comes in. Right-handed dribble here for Jerron Cornish. And it's another turnover. And this has been a point of emphasis for the officials coming into uh, this season, trying to make sure the uh, picks that are being set on the perimeter, uh, those guys are stationary, uh, not creating an advantage for the offense. And we've seen a, quite a few of those calls being made early on this year. Alex Christie, number 21, whistled for his first foul. There's a three-point attempt by Lawson. And going high for the rebound is Cornish. Cornish off and running, kicks it over to Yaboa. Yaboa for three, count it. Yeah, your boy is a preseason all-conference basketball player uh, who led this team in scoring that rebound the last year, and he's certainly the star that stirs his team drink. Fifth point of the game for Yaboa as Stony Brook takes the one-point lead it is South Carolina and Stony Brook here in Columbia. The Seawolves lead by one. You to Auburn Arena for a great win between the number 25 Washington Huskies and the number 11 Tigers. You can always watch it live on the ESP app from anywhere. Right here in Columbia, it is the Seawolves of Stony Brook leading the Gamecocks of South Carolina by one. Hello everybody, Birch Antley, the captain Kerry Rich and captain Yaboa with a big three pointer and South Carolina with a three pointer of their own. Their first of the year after going 0 for 18 against USC Upstate. Yeah, you were hoping they won't have a repeat performance. It's good to see them attack the paint early on, playing well defensively, but again, offensively as a whole, still off to a slow start. Well, South Carolina, Mike Coatser already in early yeah. foul trouble with two. And that can't happen because he's a big, big part of what this team uh, is going to do this year. Uh, he's a veteran. He's his junior. He understands the expectations. And to uh, pick up two quick fouls uh, certainly uh, very, very disappointing for Mike Kulsaw when you talk about his overall importance to the basketball team. See Hassani Gravit getting set to check in for Carolina. So it's Gravit, Felipe Hase, Chris Silva, Trey Campbell, A.J. Lawson on the floor. And actually, Lawson on the bench for this rotation. That would give them six players, which would be a little unfair. <laughs> Chris Silva, a very good free throw shooter. Hassani Gravit is also in the game. He was a starting point guard for this team last year. He seems to be playing uh, with a whole lot more confidence. Doesn't have to process as much playing the point guard. Uh, it's going to be fun watching him play off the ball uh, this year. Hassani led the Gamecocks in rebounding with 12 rebounds against USC Upstate. Well, he's very, very athletic for his size. You're not able to really see that when you're playing the point point guard position, especially last year. Uh, but now you get to see a lot of that. You got a lot of high flyers this year for the Gamecocks, something that we haven't seen in quite some time. Here's Latimer launching a three. Off the left iron, and here comes Trey Campbell. Campbell. With a nice underhanded scoop shot in transition, going coast to coast to put the Gamecocks ahead by two, seven to five. And Trey Kelly hasn't, uh, excuse me, Trey Lawson uh, hasn't uh, had a lot of reps in practice, uh, banged up ankles, so he's been out and uh, taking him some time to try to get comfortable with this basketball team. But it's good to see him come out and play with this type of aggression early on. Trey Campbell. Out of Washington, D.C., for Gamecock fans, you may remember another Trey that played the point guard out of Washington, D.C. That was Trey Kelly. Trey Kelly, who was pretty doggone good, by the way. Grab it. Lob pass inside. Looking for Silva, and Silva too strong with that touch. Chris Silva, when he first arrived, as you take a look at head coach Jeff Bowles, Looking for an improved season after going 13 and 19 last year. 
When Chris Silva first arrived in Columbia, would it be fair to say he was quite raw? Uh, he was more of an athlete than basketball player. And uh, we've seen the evolution of Chris Silva. That's why he's gotten so much national attention. And, you know, by the way, uh, kudos to the national media to recognize Chris Silva. Uh, this basketball team didn't win a whole lot of games, but obviously did enough work in conference uh, that generates the amount of respect that we've seen the national media give him. But he's certainly evolved as an offensive basketball player. Still got to be a lot smarter when it comes to fouling, but uh, it's good to see him uh, make the progression that he's made. Another turnover, Stony Brook. That's their fourth. Seven to five, Gamecocks here with 14-26 to play. Now you have the talented freshman, A.J. Lawson, who's now playing the point guard position. Uh, Frank is really, really high on A.J.'s ability to uh, play all three positions on the perimeter. A little bit nervous first game. There's our guy, Keyshawn Bryant, uh, coming in, shooting the jump shot. Uh, it's going to be fun watching these freshmen play together. Keyshawn Bryant, one word that was used a lot to describe Keyshawn Bryant was fearless. Mm -hmm. And athletic. <laughs> Olanayi with the jumper. On that last trip down, it is seven to seven now. Here's Silva backing in. I like to see Silva be a little bit quicker a lot more crisp and, and make his move with a lot more force because he's so athletic down there. And um, he'll be able to get a lot more free throws if he's able to finish stronger um, as he goes into his moves. Anthony Ochefu, the 6'8 sophomore with his first foul. And Silva, he went nine for 12 at the free throw line in the season opener as Garcia checks in. Andrew Garcia, he scored 14 points, had four rebounds on five of nine shooting coming off the bench in that win against George Washington. He and Jordan McKenzie checking in for Stony Brook. McKenzie out of Concord, North Carolina. Garcia, he's from Harlem. And Garcia likes to play from the perimeter. As a matter of fact, when uh, he comes to the game, expects Stony Brook to face the floor, spread the floor, and make South Carolina guard the perimeter a lot more. Nine, seven Gamecocks. Stony Brook basketball, 13 and a half to play. Latimer driving in. It's gonna be a jump ball situation, possession arrow, not yet. Gonna have a foul on Justin Benaya. His first. Initially thought that would be a jump ball situation there, Captain. Yeah, I think the entire Colonial Life Arena thought the same thing. Inbounds, Ochefu to Garcia. And Felipe Hase with his first foul. And speaking to the South Carolina coaching staff today, this is what they uh, sort of feared. Uh, when Garcia comes into the game, they space you out and they try to make you guard the perimeter. Manaya gets the miss. Lawson across the timeline. Lawson off the baseline. And it's Stony Brook basketball with just under 13 minutes to play. A nine to seven ball game. Fresh shot clock here for the Seawolves. McKenzie, a little skip pass. Turnaround jumper, not there, and Hase collects for Carolina. Bryant spinning in. What a move by Keyshawn Bryant, the freshman from Winter Haven, Florida, with his first bucket of the game. And I think that's been the most surprising um, aspect of his game for the coaching staff. They knew they were getting a terrific athlete, but the way he's transitioned to becoming a basketball player has been a pleasant surprise. But I'll tell you, he has the coaching staff really, really excited. And as you can tell, the CLA is really excited about this young man. Stony Brook, one of eight. Now one of nine, one of their last nine. And South Carolina behind Keyshawn Bryant takes the lead 11 to seven. 
Nine Central, the SEC Nation traveling pregame show with Laura, Marcus, Paul, Tim, and Lauren. It will be in Fayetteville for number seven LSU and Arkansas to break down everything from the gridiron to the grill for week 11 of the college football season. SEC Nation presented by Dr. Pepper right here on the SEC Network, also streaming live on the ESPN app. As we look into that Carolina huddle, the Gamecocks leading 11 to seven. Keyshawn Bryant coming off the bench, getting a nice bucket. South Carolina, a three-pointer from Trey Campbell. But Mike Coatser, again, in early foul trouble with two. Yes, but I tell you, South Carolina's done a really good job defensively. Uh, they forced uh, Stony Brook to shoot one of the last nine shot attempts. So they picked up the defensive intensity. They made it really, really uncomfortable. And uh, anybody that's watched a Frank Martin coach basketball team, uh, obviously you like to see the offense uh, on par with where the defense is. But anytime you're coming into the game against a South Carolina basketball team, you know that you're going to be physically defended and it's going to be really difficult for you to score any type of offense. And turnover is an issue right now for Stony Brook as well. Yes, and South Carolina's pressure has a lot to do with that. Pressure forcing a couple of shot clock violations as Hassani Gravit launches the jumper. And a foul underneath. It's going to be on Bryant, his first. And fifth team foul for the Gamecocks. And because South Carolina uh, has some new pieces, I like to see some of that defensive pressure create easy scoring opportunities uh, for them on the other end of the basketball court. There's Jordan McKenzie backing in on A.J. Lawson, now switching over as Manaya. Oh, that was a nice feed into the post for Yaboa, but he lost the handle. Well, nice backdoor cut, and that's what you give up um, as a defense, Frank Martin. You overplay, you take away passing lanes on the perimeter. Nice backdoor cut. South Carolina got lucky on that one because he, he blew a wide-open opportunity to flush that basketball. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Shot clock below five. Three-point attempt off the left side. Imanaya is there for the rebound. Off to Trey Campbell, who just entered, and there's a turnover. Knifing into the passing lane is Jordan McKenzie to take it away for Stony Brook. Garcia. Last touched by Hassani Gravit, it looks like. So it will remain with the Seawolves with 10.51 to play, 11 to seven lead for Carolina. Jules Moore, 6'5 freshman from Houston, Texas, to pull the trigger. And another Stony Brook turnover. That's five now for the Seawolves. Five turnovers, really good pressure being applied by South Carolina on the perimeter. Got to find a way to make that resonate on the other end of the basketball court so that you're now able to get some easy opportunities. A little bit too difficult for them to get any type of nice flowing offense right now for this Gamecock basketball team. Bryant whips it over right side. Campbell looking for Silva down low. And Silva is going to be fouled by Andrew Garcia. And that's a nice senior move. Uh, Silva took his time, uh, got post position, uh, got to where he wanted to be, and, and made sure he was fouled on that particular uh, jump shot. But that's a senior. That's someone that's been around it. He understands it. And he didn't rush. And I like the fact that uh, point guard Trey Campbell made sure he got the basketball down to Chris Silva on the block. First shot is good for Chris Silva. And also, Chris Silva, because of the national attention he's gotten, uh, he's the focal point of everything uh, the opponents are going to do defensively right now, so he has to get used to that. South Carolina on a 6-0 run. 
until that three-pointer, knocked down by Yaboa. He's got eight. Carolina turnover. And it's Stony Brook basketball trailing by three, 13 to 10 with 10 minutes to play. And your boy is going to uh, continue to be a problem, especially on the left side of the floor. He likes to play from the left side of the floor. He's good enough to drive it, but he's also good enough to knock down perimeter jump shots like we've seen here the last few possessions. Yaboa, eight points, four rebounds. Again, that perimeter defense for South Carolina as the shot clock falls below 10. But Yaboa drives in, unable to get the lay in. And that's going to be a foul whistled on Chris Silva, his first. Sixth team foul for Carolina. Fresh shot clock here for Stony Brook. Let's take a look. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised at that foul call just now. <laughs> but Chris Silva has a reputation that's probably not favorable uh, when it comes to fouling. I'll say with the rebound. Score remains Carolina 13, Stony Brook 10. As we go below nine and a half to play. Bryant on the perimeter, whips it over Gravit. Gravit for three, count it. Asani Gravit, his first three-pointer of the season. I love the role that he's uh, now uh, satisfied in terms of coming off the bench, accepting that role and uh, playing with so much more confidence, not processing. He could be huge for this basketball team coming off the bench. McKenzie kicks it out straight away. Three, Garcia, count it for yeah. Andrew Garcia, who was two of five from the three-point line against George Washington in the win over the Colonials, their season opener. Here's Hase underneath, and he's going to be fouled. Good interior pass by Chris Silva uh, to Felipe Haas. This year, Haas has gotten a little bit stronger. I want to see him be able to snatch that ball up and finish it in the paint. Could have possibly been an and one just now. Uh, that's something that Coach Martin has been uh, stressing to Felipe uh, since he's been back uh, from, the, from last year. Want to see him be a little bit quicker in that paint when he catches the basketball. It was Andrew Garcia with the foul, his second on Felipe Hase as we take another look. Right off the hip there of Hase. I tell you, Birch, I've been watching Frank Martin coach his basketball team here. Uh, this is the year number seven, and I'm seeing something that I haven't seen uh, from Frank Martin. Mike Kosa, who has two fouls, is back in the game. Normally with two fouls uh, under Frank, you're going to sit for the rest of the half. And, exactly. Uh, I guess it speaks to just trying to find something to get this basketball team going. Coats are number 21. The 6'11 junior from Estonia. And that's going to be A.J. Lawson getting a hand in. That's the first foul on A.J. Lawson from Toronto. So that will send Jules Moore to the line. He was three for five against George Washington. Rattles out the first one. Stony Brook appears to be just a little bit quicker to the basketball, especially when it uh, comes to rebounding and Again, I like to see South Carolina get some opportunities to play in space and not have to go up against a set defense every single possession. Second opportunity there for Jules Moore is good. And it's a two-point game right now, 16 to 14 in favor of Carolina. Nine offensive rebounds for Stony Brook. Just one for the Gamecocks. And here comes Stony Brook off the Carolina miss. Chance to tie or take the lead. Felipe Hase got beat out on the perimeter and then forced 
Mike Coatser into his third personal foul. It is South Carolina leading by two, 16 to 14. Welcome back to the Colonial Life Arena. As the Seawolves and the Gamecocks shaking things up a little bit. And for Carolina, it is Mike Coatser in early foul trouble with three personal fouls now. And Stony Brook out shooting Carolina. They've had more opportunities too. They have had 23 shots, Carolina only 12. And that's been the difference in the game. And that's what happens when you're playing against a smaller lineup. And they space you out on the floor. It puts you as a defense into scramble mode. And when you're in scramble mode, unfortunately, it compromises your defensive position. And we've seen that happen for this basketball team. Frank has countered, and he's now going small to match and hopefully combat what Stony Brook is doing by also going um, with a much smaller team. Olanayi ties this game up at 16. He's got four points now after those two free throws. And there's A.J. Lawson cutting in for Carolina to retake the lead for the Gamecocks. A.J. Lawson with his first basket of the game. I like the fact that he just caught it, squared up, didn't think about it, and attacked the basket. He's so fast with the basketball, and he's much better when he's not processing. But let's not forget that he really should still be a, a senior in high school. Yeah, graduating early to come down south and play for Frank Martin and the Gamecocks. Before the break, Stony Brook out rebounding Carolina 18 to nine. There's Campbell for three. And Lawson fighting for the rebound. Latimer's gonna pull it in. Jump ball situation. No, they're gonna whistle another foul. Oh, out of bounds, Carolina. Again, you mentioned the, the, the rebounds. Let's take a look. It looks like Campbell's foot was out of bounds. Yes, which yep, right on the line. disqualified him um, as being an active player in between the lines. But you, you mentioned just um, how South Carolina has been out rebounded, even with Stony Brook being a much smaller basketball team. Stony Brook just seems to want it a little bit more and quicker to the basketball than South Carolina. Let's see whether this lineup, which is much smaller with Silver at the five, uh, Manaya at the four, let's see whether they can match the speed and intensity that Stony Brook has brought the first few minutes of this game. We've got a timeout on the floor. This one called by Coach Jeff Bowles, head coach for Stony Brook. Our officials tonight, Steven Anderson, Brian Shea, and Nathan Bemis, and that was a good call right there by Brian Shea. As we saw Trey Campbell over the line, Campbell, that grad transfer from, from Georgetown. South Carolina, Kerry, being out-rebounded right now, and you've got one of your leading rebounders on the bench with three personal fouls in Mike Coatser. What do you do if you're Frank Martin? Well, you do what Frank Martin just did, and that's a try a different lineup. You try something new that's going to hopefully generate some energy. Uh, this past Tuesday against USC Upstate, Keyshawn Bryant was that energy of uh, energizer. He was the one that came into the game and, and got him to play faster, got out of transition, got some easy opportunities, got a few dunks. We haven't seen South Carolina get any easy opportunities tonight. And this is a scrappy, confident Stony Brook team who overcame a 22-point deficit in their season opener against the Colonials of George Washington. And let's not think that uh, they didn't bring that confidence to the CLA tonight. Exactly. Good rebound there, and second chance points for Elijah Olanai. Yipoa <laughs> with the foul, his second. Oh, first foul, rather, on Yipoa. And we saw Chris Silva shoot that that trail of three, something that he's been working on, something that Frank Martin has given them the green light uh, to do. And uh, just haven't had the success early on uh, for the Gamecocks. Lane violation against the Gamecocks here. As Hase at the scorer's table, getting ready to check back in.
So right now we've got the officials taking a look at the old replay machine to see if that was a flagrant foul on Chris Silva. And this is what's been so frustrating for Frank Martin and his staff, just getting Chris Silva to understand uh, the importance uh, he has when it comes to this basketball team. And uh, when you make, he plays so hard, and the challenge for him is playing with balance. And when you look at the number of minutes he's on the floor and how much this team has won when he's on the floor, there is a direct correlation. And Chris Silva got to find a way to separate from uh, that mindset of, of picking up those fouls that come back to not only haunt him, but also haunt the basketball team because it's such a big part of what they do. Here's a look. Normal foul will be a one and one. Yeah, it just uh, looked like he just rolled, uh, he rolled him out just now. He didn't have any uh, any activity above the elbow, above the chest area, and that's when it uh, becomes a little bit tricky. But uh, yeah, uh, just again, just uh, not a smart foul by Chris Silver, especially when you look at scoring the amount of time left in the first half. So a common foul, second on Chris Silver. And at the line is Ochefu. Stony Brook, their first lead since it was five to four. Now it's 2018 with 610 to play. Here's Trey Campbell. It's Campbell, Hase, Manaya, Lawson, and Bryant on the floor for the Garnet in black. And there is Lawson on the cutter. Good recognition by Hase, but better cut by A.J. Lawson. And they got to find a way to get more of those easy baskets without having to fight so, so hard every single possession. Four points now for A.J. Lawson. We are tied 20-20, but six minutes to play. Three-point attempts. Misses left. That one taken by Yaboa. Hase wants a three straight away. Too strong. Back iron, big rebound for Olanai. Olanayi out of Newark, New Jersey. Played at Newark Eastside High School. Along with Hassan Cisse, the 6'4 freshman who was yet to enter the ball game. Justin Manaya with his second foul. Gamecocks only dressing nine tonight certainly uh, makes it very problematic uh, when uh, you talk about this foul trouble and how it could potentially come back to haunt them in the second half. Well, and he was six points now as he makes both shots from the free throw line. Returns the lead to Stony Brook. The Seawolves lead by two, Asani grab it on the cutter. Nice awareness by Trey Campbell and five points for Gravit now. And I thought it was great patience uh, displayed by Trey Campbell. He waited to get his guys in position and a uh, really good move by Hassan to set his man up. Felipe Hase unable to get over on defense and that's an easy basket. First points of the game for Stony Brook and Jaron Cornish. Bryant for three, air ball. And Felipe Hase puts it down out of bounds to Stony Brook. Yeah, it looks like Bryant had his mind made up before the ball even got to him that he was going to uh, take that jump shot in. When you're a freshman, uh, you're still trying to figure it out and have to be a little bit more selective. But because he's going to be a big, big part of what this team does as a coach, you got to live with some of these early moments uh, in the second game of the season. Pinned off the backboard, but kept alive by Stony Brook. Foul underneath. First foul on Hassani Gravit. 
South Carolina carry on these last few possessions for Stony Brook appear to be a, a little slow in the low post defensively. Yeah, the, the help side isn't where it needs to be in, uh, in a Frank Martin coached defense. Help side is really, really important because think about how they play. Uh, they want to pressure the dribbler, but they also want to take away those passing lanes. They're going to get inside of those lanes and make you have to go back door. But if you're going to go back door, that help side has to be there, and it hasn't been there for the Gamecocks thus far. Now, is that a, a pretty easy adjustment at halftime for Frank Martin to make? Or? Well, you like to think it's a pretty easy adjustment, but let's remember that you still have some new pieces that you're trying to implement into what this team does. And only nine bodies. And only nine bodies, yep. 26-22, there's a turnover. Gamecock basketball with numbers, and there's Bryant with the jam. And hopefully that gets this crowd going. Great look ahead, great pitch ahead by A.J. Lawson and Keyshawn Bryant. Duncan getting this crowd in. Hopefully it gets them going just a little bit. Carolina down by two, 26-24, three and a half to play. And South Carolina ratcheting up that defense. And there's the Stony Brook turnover. Seventh turnover of the night for Stony Brook. It's Carolina and Stony Brook here in the Hall of Fame tip-off. It's the Seawolves by two. Tomorrow we'll have another full slate of college football right here on the SEC Network. Drew Locke in Missouri hosting Vandy at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. Then it's number 11, Kentucky, taking on Tennessee at four, followed by number seven, LSU, squaring off against Arkansas at 7.30 in our SEC Saturday night matchup, presented by Holiday Inn Express. All three games are all streaming live on the ESPN app. Here in Columbia, it is 26-24 in favor of Stony Brook with the two-point lead. And Gary, let's take a look at Keyshawn Bryant getting this crowd a little energized. Here's the freshman from Winter Haven, Florida. Well, he's a high flyer. And he's, a, uh, he's a guy that gets the crowd excited. And last time, this past Tuesday against USC Upstate, he came into the game and he was able to get zero rebounds thus far. Yes, goose egg. It's got to be a concern for Frank Martin. A very frustrating concern, and let's just say that it should be very entertaining uh, at halftime. Another turnover by Stony Brook. Lawson to Bryant. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be really fun watching these two young guys play the game here. Even this year, as they get older, get a little bit more comfortable, but that's who A.J. Lawson is. Uh, he's a guy who passes the basketball really well, and we all know what Keyshawn Bryant wants to do once he gets that ball in the open floor. Well, Frank Martin had a chance at a guy from South Carolina that had a vertical game. This kid from Florida, he's got one, and he's on campus. Yeah, and i tell you one thing, uh, and as Stony Brook makes a three, uh, did a good job of collapsing the defense, but in practice, uh, I'm told every time A.J. Lawson and Keyshawn Bryant gets an opportunity to lay it up, they're trying to duck it. On the other end, that was a big three-pointer by Miles Latimer. And now we've got Keyshawn Bryant with a foul. It's going to be his second. And Frank Martin is forced to stay with players that now have two fouls. Again, uh, he's accustomed to uh, making guys sit for the rest of the half. And not only him, that seems to be uh, customary throughout college basketball once you pick up two fouls in the first half. McKenzie on the baseline, out of bounds. Carolina basketball trailing by three after the three-pointer from Miles Latimer. It's A.J. Lawson knifing in. Left-hander, nice teardrop there for A.J. Lawson. Gamecocks down by one, six points now. For Lawson, three assists. That's who he is as a basketball player. He's a multi-dimensional perimeter player, uh, plays with a high IQ, and he's playing with a lot more confidence tonight. Uh, you, it's amazing what one game, a difference one game makes. Good steal by Trey Campbell, and Campbell's going to draw a contact. I like to see more of that, Birch. I think when you're 
and, and there you go, Trey surveying the scene, looking to see what he has. It's good as a point guard to put pressure on the defense under control. And I think when you do that, not only do you uh, put pressure on the defense, but it also creates easy offensive rebounding opportunities for your team, like we've seen with Stony Brook. By them attacking that basket, they forced the South Carolina defense to be in disarray, scramble mode, and that's why they've been able to take advantage of some easy offensive rebounding situations. Nice move by Trey Kelly. Excuse me, Trey Lawson. <laughs> Campbell, his first shot is there. He's got six points now. A couple of rebounds, one assist and a steal. Stony Brook basketball, we're tied 29-29, a minute and a half to play now until halftime. South Carolina's now forced to play zone because of the foul trouble, so many guys having two fouls. And it also negates Stony Brook's opportunity or ability to space the floor and dribble drive those guys, which has gotten South Carolina to some foul trouble. Shot clock at four, now at three. Jason Cudd, who just entered the ball game, sophomore out of Sacristy High School at Myrtle Beach. And I guess the biggest story is another offensive rebound uh, that South Carolina surrendered. And again, because Stony Brook has done a really good job of driving that basketball, it's forced South Carolina's defense to be in scramble mode, and they've compromised their ability to rebound the basketball. Sacristy High School, former head coach there, went on to coach in the NBA for quite a while. Coach D'Antoni? Coach D'Antoni, yes. Also the creator of the prestigious beach ball exact classic in Murder Beach. One of the premier national basketball tournament, one of those holiday tournaments. Ten second call, and that is a an absolute no-no for a point guard to ever surrender a 10-second call. Even as you're trying to get your team into his office, no way can you give up a 10-second call, and Frank Martin is not happy at all. University of South Carolina women's soccer team playing tonight here in Columbia over at Stone Stadium, and they advance to the second round of the NCAA championship tournament as they knock off UNCG three to one. And they'll have the winner of West Virginia and Radford. Coach Shelly Smith once again has her team poised for another appearance in the College Cup here at Colonial Life Arena. South Carolina and Stony Brook. We've got ourselves a good one right here, Captain. Oh, we do. 29. And uh, with 43 seconds to go, Frank Martin just made a, another big decision to insert Chris Silver back into the game. We saw that backfire early on when Mike saw uh, Mike Kosar picking up his third foul. Chris Silver now back into the game with 43 seconds to go with two fouls already. It's going to be a very nerve-wracking 43 seconds for this basketball staff. <laughs> Chris Silva with five points. No rebounds, all five points coming from the free throw line. Campbell kicks it over to Hase. Hase left side, A.J. Lawson for three, buries it. The freshman from Toronto, he's got nine points. Well, Frank wants him to be aggressive. After the USC Upstate game, he talked about A.J. Lawson being more aggressive because of his multi-dimensional uh, skill set. So now uh, I thought maybe Stony Brook would have tried to go two for one, but it looks like that's not going to be the case. 32-31, Carolina grabs the lead with that A.J. Lawson three. Seven seconds off the rim, but the tip in there by Ochefu. And we'll go to halftime with Stony Brook leading by one, 33-32. Stay with us.
Ironman Columbia. It's South Carolina in the white, Stony Brook in the red, Carolina attacking the goal to the left of your screen. A.J. Lawson, skip pass over to Trey Campbell. A.J. Lawson with nine points in the first half. Big three-pointer as well. He was the lone bright spot for this team offensively. Manaya inside Silva, nothing there, so he kicks it out to A.J. Lawson. Lawson. There you go. He, he's playing with a lot more aggressiveness, and uh, again, Frank wants him to be aggressive. Frank wants him to imprint, him being Lawson, imprint this basketball with the skill set. And uh, also pay attention to Justin Manaya. He didn't play well Tuesday night. This is a guy that's, uh, because of what he was able to do as a two-way player last year, certainly they're expecting a lot from him this year. Hadn't gotten up to a good start yet. He's got 11 points, double digits. Cardinal sin to never, ever foul a three-point shooter. And for Felipe Hase, this is his second foul of, of such. Uh, he fouled the same type of foul uh, Tuesday night against USC Upstate, fouled a three-point shooter, and again, he just committed another foul on the three-point shooter. Uh, not very smart basketball. So it's Akwase Yeboa, the Englishman, 6'6", redshirt junior at the line. He's got 11 points now, Yeboah. Make it a dozen. Yeboah arguably has been the best offensive player on the floor tonight, regardless of which team you're talking about, South Carolina or Stony Brook. Certainly, Lawson has been good, but Yeboah has arguably been the best basketball player on the offensive end tonight. 14 of 15 from the free throw line are the Seawolves. Silva. Top of the perimeter, easy handoff, Trey Campbell. Gamecocks trailing by two, and there's a turnover. Here come the Seawolves. Good basket there. Excellent job by Jaron Cornish to pick up his fourth point. Cornish from the Bahamas. Bryant over to Manaya. Manaya driving in. And Manaya. With the putback and the hoop and the harm, he'll go to the line. And it's good to see Justin Manai not only score the basketball, but he scored the basketball driving it to the basket. It's not something that he's necessarily known for. He's a spot-up shooter, but this is something that he's added to his game this year, being able to go off the bounce, good offensive rebound. Hopefully this gets him going. Jeff O'Cherry charged with his third foul as Manaya completes the three-point play. And it's South Carolina down by one now, 38-37. Just underway here, second half. For a team like Stony Brook, the more you let them hang around, the more confident they become. The more confident they become, the better they feel about themselves. And they're going to feel like they have a chance to win this game. And there's that guy again, Yeboah, with a three from the corner. Yeboah, 16 points now for Yeboah. America East preseason all-conference. Trey Kimball, down like a for three and count it as Campbell answers from the right elbow. Nine points for Trey Campbell. Keeps it a one point game, 41-40, Stony Brook. Fighting for the loose ball, it's Latimer coming away with it for Stony Brook, driving in. Big block there by Chris Silva. Nice recovery by Chris Silva, got beat off the dribble. Uh, something that you can't give up. Obviously, when you're going against guys, teams like Stony Brook, who's going to dribble, drive you in space. Nice recovery by Chris Silver to not only block the basketball, but certainly uh, not foul. Something that he's been known to do here uh, the last couple of years. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Here's the inbounds. Jabot up. Another three. Count it. Really good offensive action from out of bounds. Poor defense and communication by South Carolina because if there's one guy that you cannot leave open for Stony Brook, that would be your boy. And he was wide open for a jump shot a few moments ago, something that just cannot happen. A bad, bad defensive breakdown by South Carolina. He's got 19 in the game, nine this half. There's no way 
do you allow him to ever, no way do you allow him to ever uh, get that open shooting the basketball. He's got all of Stony Brook's points here in the half. a rejection on the other end. Got that one for O'Cherry. 6'11 sophomore out of the Bronx in New York. He had three blocks against George Washington. Yes, and you now see why. I think South Carolina got to find a way to, again, Trey Campbell did a good job of driving the basketball, but great help side defense to, uh, to block it. 13 seconds of the shot clock. And travel. Good call. Uh, Chris Silva uh, took too much time, wasn't convicted. Uh, need to be a little bit quicker, a little bit more forceful when he catches that basketball in the paint. Eighth turnover for Carolina. 44-40, the Gamecocks trail. Stony Brook basketball in the red. South Carolina can't get into any type of offensive flow for whatever reason. Underneath Garcia. And count it for Garcia and he'll go to the line. And this all is because of the dribble breakdown, the defensive breakdown caused by the dribble penetration and this it's put South Carolina in a very, very difficult position. 46-40, Stony Brook. And they'll be there live when we return to Columbia. Looking at that Carolina bench, Frank Martin and his Gamecocks trailing by six to Stony Brook, 46-40. to And it's Stony Brook. The Seawolves trying to complete the old-fashioned three-point play and we return to action. I believe that was Hassani Gravit that was whistled on that foul. Let's see. I really didn't see much of a foul, but. Well, I tell you, it was right now, Stony Brook is the more aggressive basketball yeah. team, and they're quicker to the basketball when it comes to passing it and finishing at the basket. And I thought it was a really good pass by Ola Nayi and Garcia, who's been really good off the bench for the Stony Brook basketball team. They're going to get those calls. So it's Gravit sending Garcia to the line, count the basket, and Stony Brook with their largest lead of the ball game. Not only a large lead, but a very confident group of players right now. They've got the seven point advantage here on Carolina with 16.50 to play here in Columbia. This game part of the Naismith Hall of Fame Classic. Anaya hands off to Lawson. Lawson straightaway three, count it. A.J. Lawson is on fire. He's on fire, and Frank is making sure he's involved in all of the action, rubbing him off zipper, zipper screens, uh, rubbing him off ball screens, and he's coming off with the expectation to score. Frank wants him to be aggressive. Frank wants him to look for a shot, and you can see this young freshman right now is doing just that. 14 points for A.J. Lawson. And yeah, there's a turnover on the other end. And A.J. Lawson is playing without thinking. He's not processing. He's just coming off the ball screens. He's coming off down screens. As he's coming off with the ability and with the confidence to knock down shots or either just make plays. And I like the fact that he stepped up. He's become that offensive guy, that offensive leader for this basketball team. And there's no other player for South Carolina that possesses the offensive skill set that he does. O'Cherry leaves the court with four personal fouls now for Stony Brook. 16 minutes to play, and their big fella, 6'11 sophomore, O'Cherry, he'll be unavailable for the majority of this second half. There's Chris Silva. Chris Silva got to finish that as the... Chris Silva got to finish that basketball play. He was at the basket, close to the basket. Got to be able to finish that play. 
Alex Christie whistled with the foul. It's 47-43, a four-point lead for the Seawolves over the Gamecocks. We'll have another full slate of college football right here on the SEC Network. It's Drew Locke in Missouri hosting Bandy at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. Then number 11, Kentucky taking on Tennessee at four. That's followed by number seven, LSU squaring off against Arkansas at 7.30 in our SEC Saturday night matchup presented by Holiday Inn Express. All three games are also streaming live on the ESPN app. Cocky and the Gamecocks find themselves trailing by four to Stony Brook. And they find themselves trailing in the rebound department 31 to 16. And even within that number, Birch, Stony Brook has 15 offensive rebounds. South Carolina has 16 total rebounds. So when you talk 15 offensive rebounds, simply stated, that gives you more opportunities at the basket, which is why you look at 40 field goal attempts compared to 33 field goal attempts, South Carolina. So they've got more opportunities at the basket. Than 17 second chance points for Stony Brook, only six for Carolina. And that's the difference because second chance points means that the defense is in disarray. Uh, the defense is, in, uh, is out of rebounding position. So it gives you opportunities that are closest to the basket. And that's when your field goal percentage goes up like we've seen from this basketball team. Chris Silva, only five points, no rebounds for the preseason All-SEC. Right now, keeping the Carolina in the ball game, it's the freshman, A.J. Lawson, with 14 points, six of 10, shooting from the floor, two three-pointers. And if you're South Carolina, you're lucky to even be in the game with Chris Silva having that type of stat line, but that's the best player. You cannot have it that way. There you go. A.J. Lawson, I've been so high on this young man from the start. Uh, he should be a senior in high school. Uh, but he's going to have a really, really big-time career here at South Carolina with his ability to play all three positions, eight points in the second half already for A.J. Lawson. He's become the lone offensive bright spot for this team. 17 total points for A.J. Lawson. Count that for Anthony Ochefu. And Ochefu now with four points. To go along with a couple of boards, one foul for Ochefu. 49-46, three-point Stony Brook lead. Here's Chris Silva with the jumper. And the follow is there for Justin Minaya. And again, Justin, Justin Minaya's two field goals, two made field goals, both have come from offensive rebounds. And again, not something that we're used to seeing from Justin Minaya. He's a spot-up shooter. But it's good to see him involve himself in other areas, other facets of the game. Stony Brook by one with the basketball. Kick out right side. Cornish for three. Air ball. Four seconds on the shot clock. Now three. And shot clock violation. That's the third. And this is the third. But South Carolina gets very lucky on this possession because they still gave up two opportunities for Stony Brook to offensive rebound the basketball. You got to conclude and you got to finish these defensive possessions by rebounding. You can play really well initially. You can apply all of the pressure that you want to apply. You can get into the passing lanes, but if you do not conclude these possessions by rebounding the basketball, it all goes for naught, which is why Stony Brook has way more offensive rebounds than South Carolina. Officials tonight, Stephen Anderson, Brian Shea, Nathan Bemis, they are taking a look at the replay monitor to see if the ball touched the rim before the shot clock expired. 49-48, Stony Brook with a one-point lead. Leading scorer in this game for both teams. It's Yaboa, Akwasi Yaboa with 15 with 19 points, five rebounds. And right there behind him for Carolina, AJ Lawson, 17 points, two rebounds, three assists. And I like the way AJ Lawson has scored the basketball. Uh, he's playing with a conviction. He's playing with a know-how. Uh, he's playing with the confidence right now that's really set him apart. And thankfully uh, for the South Carolina offense, he's been the one guy that's been able to give them any type of hope on that side of it. So the ball did hit the rim. That's the ruling from our crew. Jump ball situation, and it will go to Stony Brook. So 
So Stony Brook with a fresh 30. Tried the alley-oop on the inbounds. Chris Silva is there for the rebound. Ahead to Trey Campbell. That's his first rebound of the night, Chris Silva. And it comes with 13.58 to play in the game. Yes. <laughs> it's hard to even fathom that preseason All-SEC player getting his first rebound. This is the dunk. Just one of those nights for Chris Silva. When have we seen Chris Silva miss a dunk? <laughs> On the other end, and that's the way you that's how it normally turn it around in transition. Yeah. Follow a missed dunk by Chris Silva with a three-pointer. Nine points now by Andrew Garcia. Yeah, that's how it normally happens. You have a bad play on one end, and the other side of the court just finds a way to uh, go against you. Now. And Silva Nothing is going right for Silva right gets now. Gets the rebound, but loses the handle. Now down low to Silva. He gets the hoop in the horn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you saw Silva exhale and just go finally. Yeah, I think the entire crowd, the entire arena exhale. <laughs> Let's take another look here, Kerry. Yeah, you know, I, again, I talked about Chris being a little bit quicker, or being a lot more forceful once he catches the ball in the paint, and he was convicted on making that left-handed move just now, and it's good to see that ball finally go through the basket, finally go through the hoop, and normally when that happens, that impacts your confidence in a positive way. Let's see whether this certainly impacts Chris Silva moving forward. He's got seven points, and Silva misses. The free throw, unable to convert the three-point play. Cornish to Latimer. Now Yaboa, Yaboa. On a nice cutter to Ochefu. Great pick and roll. We normally see a lot of that in, in the NBA, but we saw a nice old-fashioned traditional pick and roll that led to a layup for Stony Brook. Ochefu with eight points. A.J. Lawson. And Manaya goes down along with Garcia. Garcia appears to be shaken up on this play. So it is Garcia being attended to. By the training staff from Stony Brook, he went down hard along with Justin Manaya fighting for that loose ball. And you're hoping that it's nothing too serious. Uh, he's been a very good basketball player out on the floor tonight for Stony Brook. And Garcia being helped up, getting a round of applause here from the fans at the Colonial Life Arena as we look at it, that Stony Brook huddle, and Yaboa has been certainly impressive tonight. 19.7 rebounds, a couple of assists, just one foul. He's been really good, but again, talking to the coaching staff earlier today, they were worried about once Garcia entered the game because it changes how Stony Brook, uh, Stony Brook plays. Uh, he has the ability to step out and play from the perimeter. Now it allows all five guys to play from the perimeter. When you have post guys, post players who are not used to guarding the perimeter, uh, it's uncharted waters. It's uncharted territories, territory, which is why we've seen so many offensive rebounds given up by South Carolina tonight. So it's Jordan McKenzie running point. Stony Brook leading by four. Just under 12 and a half minutes to play. Stony Brook basketball. McKenzie. Now to Latimer. Latimer jumper over Gravit. Nicely done by Miles Latimer. Latimer shot that with confidence just now. And in, uh, in his first two exhibition games, uh, he shot a total of 13 threes. So he's a guy that can shoot it, and he's a guy that's looking to shoot the basketball as a freshman. Five points for Latimer now. Back in the ball game is Mike Coatser, and he quickly gets an assist off that bucket from Justin Manaya. Manaya with seven points. Nice high-low pass by just uh, by Mike Coatser, recognizing how the defense was playing. Good catch and finish by Justin Manaya, who's scoring closer to the basket. Something that we 
didn't see a lot of last year from this young man. McKenzie moves the pivot foot, whistle for the travel. 56-52, Stony Brook for the four-point lead. We've got 11 and a half minutes to play. It's basketball night in Columbia. Stay with us. Welcome back to Columbia, 56-52, a four-point Stony Brook lead in the second half. South Carolina is at eight of 14, or eight of 16, rather, and Stony Brook has hit eight of 14 shots. But South Carolina, three-pointers, they've hit three in the second half to hang in into this ball game here with Stony Brook down by four. But Stony Brook looks like the more confident basketball team right now. When you're looking at them offensively, there's an identity. You know what they want to do. They've done a good job of, of, of executing their game plan. The South Carolina are still not quite there yet. And hopefully, again, they can get some opportunities to play in space. So that takes some of the pressure off of them of having to score in the half court. South Carolina being out-rebounded 36 to 19. Chris Silva whistled with his third foul. So Silva and Coatser with three fouls each now for Carolina. Stony Brook got lucky just now because the ball handler uh, was out of control. He was uh, going up against three defenders just now. And unfortunately, Chris Silva reached in and probably never going to get the benefit of the doubt when it comes to that. Skip pass over to Moore. Jules Moore, the 6'5 freshman from Houston. Now Latimer being guarded by Bryant. Yeah, uh, called, uh, called a hand check, and then we, I think that's the first time we've seen that hand check called on the, uh, on the perimeter. And as a staff, as a coach, you, if you're going to make that call, you like to see that established in the first half. So now players are just a little bit different. It didn't happen. Three fouls now on Keyshawn Bryant. So Bryant, Coatser, and Silva for Carolina with three fouls each. There's the tip in on the follow through. Count that one for Ochefu. Another offensive rebound. And Ochefu with eight points. South Carolina cannot seem to find an answer to combat the dribble drive pressure that the ball handlers from Stony Brook, Brook continue to put on them without giving up defensive rebounder position. And they've given up so many offensive rebounds. And uh, right now they're at 17 to count, well, 18 to count. And that's been the difference in the game. They've got more opportunities closest to the basket than South Carolina. And that's why they're up six with 10 minutes to go. Grab it. And this is the first. Andrew Garcia back on. You know, he was shaken up earlier. And it's good that Garcia's back on the floor, but if you're South Carolina, with the way they play with him on the floor, I don't know whether it's good for them. Asani hits the second. And it's Seawolves 58, Gamecocks 53. Five point lead here for the visitors from upstate New York. McKenzie on the dribble. Underneath to Olani. Olanai and Olanai will go to the line and that is the fourth personal foul on Chris Silva. And the one thing that happens when you're going, when you're playing against a Frank Martin coach basketball team defensively, again, they want to apply a lot of defensive pressure on the ball handler. They also want to get into the passing lanes. And what you give up as a defense are those backdoor plays that we've seen uh, South Carolina surrender. Uh, all night long against Stony Brook. And that's been their game plan. That's who they are. They've been very deliberate. They've been very intentional. Uh, Stony Brook, that is, in terms of getting the shots and getting the action that they've wanted to be able to have some success in the offensive end. Missing both is Olani. Olani, and it is still a 58-53 game. Three-pointer by Trey Campbell off the mark. That was just inside the three-point arc, actually. Not the shot that Frank Martin wanted from his point guard. Um, I wanted to get some action, wanted to get some ball movement. Trey Campbell settled and shot the, shot the three-point, and it turned into a run-out opportunity for Stony Brook. And 
Once again, they go to the free throw line. Third foul on Justin Manaya. So at the line, Olanai, who missed his last two just moments ago. And it's 59-53 now with 10 minutes to play. And you let a team like Stony Brook hang around with 10 minutes to go. As Ola Nayi makes his second free throw, they become a very, very dangerous basketball team down the stretch because now they have the confidence, South Carolina being down, now you tend to press just a little bit more. Good drive by Justin Manaya. Again, uh, getting something closer to the basket, jump shot not falling, but he's a guy that South Carolina needs to get on board when it comes to offensive production. Nine points for Manaya. And Manaya trying to hold on to the rebound on the other end. Loose ball. And it's a fresh 30 for Stony Brook. Carolina fans unhappy. Well, Stony Brook is the aggressor, and they're going to get the benefit of most calls as another offensive rebound for Stony Brook. And, and another Gamecock foul. And I can just tell you with nine minutes to go, that's going to be so hard to overcome that many offensive rebounds. The confidence that they're now being given through those offensive rebounds, man, look at the foul trouble. Justin Nye now uh, four fouls, and he's been the other guy on the offensive end that's given South Carolina any kind of hope. How long do you let him stay in the basketball game if you're Frank Martin? And on another note, because of how they've gotten beaten so badly against that man-to-man -man defense, it's going to be uh, interesting to see whether Frank Martin decides to go zone yeah. to protect against those dribble drive opportunities for Stony Brook. Shot is there for... Ochefu at the line as Felipe Hase comes in. So look at that last foul. And Keyshawn Bryant, the freshman, got caught watching, got caught looking, as opposed to boxing out, which is why Stony Brook got an offensive rebound. It's 62-55. Seven-point advantage for Stony Brook. A very confident Stony Brook, I might add. Ties the largest lead of the game for the Seawolves. Foul away from the basketball. This Yeboa with his second foul. As Hassani Gravit checks in for Carolina, sending Trey Campbell to the bench. And Frank is upset with Trey because he he stayed on the basketball a little bit too long, and that's something that I like to see as an old-point guard. Great post-entry pass. you got to finish that if you're Felipe Hase. They've missed so Mike Kosar, excuse me. Uh, they've missed so many opportunities at the basket, whereas Stony Brook is converting those opportunities at the basket. On the other end, Stony Brook now the largest lead of the game for the Seawolves, and Frank Martin very displeased as he calls a timeout with 8.45 to play, and the Gamecocks trailing. 64-55. Yeah, it's been, it's, it's been interesting to see the, the confidence and just the body language of Stony Brook compared to South Carolina. Uh, Stony Brook looks like the more confident, looks like the more polished, and certainly looks like the more decisive basketball team in terms of who they are, their identity, and what they want to get done. And when you're looking at South Carolina right now, that's not the case. And just... Uh, Trey Campbell, Frank took Trey Campbell out of the game because he wants him as a point guard to be able to get off of the ball a lot quicker. Because when you get off of the ball, it it allows you to play faster. And Mike Cross, I had a point blank look at the basket against a smaller guy. And you got to be able to finish that. And Stoner Brooks, this is what they've done all night long. Cornish, who, by the way, is the only senior on this basketball team, did a good job of recognizing how the defense was playing and scored the basketball. Well, this is a, a, a fast Stony Brook team, and they really have just taken the Carolina Bigs out of this ball game. Yes, and a nice slipping of the screen just now by Mike Gosar. He caught it and finished it just now. Good play out of the timeout by Frank Martin. But South Carolina, got to find a way to do a better job of negating these offensive rebounding opportunities and shutting down. There's a dribble drive, and they got lucky. 
Asani grab it. Ahead to A.J. Lawson. Lawson, now to Hase, whips it over left side. Bryant, Bryant, baseline, underneath, not there. Rebound, falls down to Yaboa and Stony Brook. Stony Brook leading 64-57, eight minutes to play. South Carolina cannot stay in front of Stony Brook's perimeter players or any player, I might add. Big block by Kotsar. On the floor, possession arrow favors Carolina. That's a block plus one if you're Mike Coatser because you get the block and the possession. Carolina trailing by seven. Coming up next, we'll take you to Auburn Arena for a good one between the number 25 Washington Huskies and the number 11 Tigers of Auburn. We're gonna watch it live right here on the ESPN app from anywhere. Here in Columbia, 64-57, Stony Brook with the lead. Birch Antley, Captain Kerry Rich with you. And Captain, if you're Stony Brook, you can shoot 34.5% from the floor if you're out rebounding the other team, 41 to 23 and 19 to seven offensively. Yeah, I'd like to take a look at a shot, shot, a shot chart for Stony Brook and see how many of their shot opportunities have come outside of the lane, outside of the paint. They've got so many opportunities closer to the paint. And that's been the storyline for this particular basketball game. South Carolina uh, getting broken down defensively, and by getting broken down, uh, they've created easy offensive rebounding situations for Stony Brook. Coatser unable to finish, and it's McKenzie with a rebound for Stony Brook. Another board for the Seawolves. And count it there for Jerron Cornish. Biggest lead of the ball game now, and eight points for Cornish. And they are attacking South Carolina off of the bounce. They're getting in a shot in the paint that they want. Ties the biggest lead, nine points for the Seawolves, who have three players in double-digit scoring. Olanayi, Yaboa, and Ochefu. And it's Lawson, A.J. Lawson going to the line for South Carolina. And just look at both teams, Birch. Um, uh, Stony Brook seems to be the more confident basketball team. They're the more talkative basketball team. They're talking to each other. They're communicating. They're engaged. And South Carolina, because of those new, those new pieces, uh, Trey Campbell being the point guard, trying to figure things out. Uh, A.J. Lawson, as good as he is, he's still a freshman. And you just don't see the same level of communication. And that impacts your body language. And uh, right now, Stony Brook, uh, they're a convicted basketball team. They seem to be very confident with what they want to do. 19 points now for A.J. Lawson. <laughs> Offensive foul, Yaboa. His third. Good job of Coatser to stay planted. And these next few minutes for South Carolina, I think, are really, really important. Uh, you don't want to get to the under four minute mark with Stony Brook still in position to win this game because they're confident. They feel good about themselves right now in South Carolina. And you don't have Chris Silva. And you don't have Chris Silva. And even when Chris Silva has been out there, he hasn't been a productive Chris Silva. When your best player isn't a productive uh, player on the floor, it really impacts everything else you do as a team. And we've seen that tonight. Silva did not pick up his first rebound until the second half. I like A.J. Lawson's aggressiveness. I like the fact that he's attacking the paint. I like the fact that he right now feels convicted that he's not going to let his team lose. And again, we talked about that multi-dimensional skill set, being able to dribble it, pass it, shoot it, get to the basket. He has all of that on display tonight. Number 23, Garcia whistled for his third foul as Lawson now with 20 points. And as the team, as this season goes on, offensively, Lawson has to beat this guy because again, he has a skill set offensively that nobody else on this team has. And for this team, he has to grow up fast. And I like the fact that Frank wants him to be the guy offensively. He has to accept it, he has to own it, and he has to play like this every single night offensively this team wants to win. Well, Trey Campbell said what he liked most about A.J. Lawson was that he's a downhill player. 
Big three-pointer there by Yaboa. And Yaboa now with 22 points, nine rebounds for Stony Brook. Little hanging jumper there for Keyshawn Bryant. Eight points now for the freshman out of Winter Haven, Florida. Very athletic player is Bryant. Had that big alley-oop dunk in the first half. And South Carolina now is in a zone, hopefully, to negate some of that dribble drive action that Stony Brook has been so successful at. And uh, not so successful this last possession. Yeboah now at 24 points as he was able to get that off of Coatser. Now Coatser, 15 footer is good. Five points for Mike Coatser. And South Carolina's gotten some easy looks the last few possessions, but uh, it's all gone for naught because AJ Lawson misses the dunk. And it will remain with the Gamecocks. Yeah, good steal. Yaboa Lawson. getting away with an elbow there, too. Yeah, Lawson never got control of the basketball. And he's a very athletic guy. And uh, uh, normally he throws that down, but he never got control of it and tried to come up and uh, good no call. He didn't get fouled. He just never got control of the basketball. They're going to whistle that on Yaboa, I believe, coming in from behind. Or the Nye, rather. On Bryant. That's Illinois first. So Bryant at the line. Knocks down the first. It's a six point Stony Brook lead. Nine points now for Keyshawn Bryant. It's all about the defense for me, uh, South Carolina, as we uh, approach the five minute mark. Big oh, rebound, Felipe Hase. Three pointer right side, Trey Campbell. Yes! And that's going to force. A timeout. Actually, it's Frank Martin that wants the timeout. 71-68. That's a big turn of events for Carolina. A big turn of events, and most people are going to look at Trey Campbell making the three, but Trey Campbell does not make that three if Felipe Hase does not get that offensive exactly. rebound. Exactly. And That's uh, a big board for Hase. Yeah, and a board. good pass out to, good. to notice that he had Campbell open. Good recognition, and also nice of Trey Campbell to just step up and shoot the basketball without thinking about it without uh, processing, and it ended up being a big, big three-pointer for South Carolina to bring them within three, five minutes and 14 seconds to go. Now, here's the other part to that. How do you defend this basketball team moving forward? You haven't been able to, South Carolina's on the 6-0 run in the last 26 seconds, but South Carolina hasn't been able to do anything defensively against that dribble drive offense of Stony Brook, driving, collapsing the defense, kicking it out, making threes, and offensive rebounding. Now we're seeing them in the 2-2-1 two, two, three-quarter matchup uh, trap. Let's see whether or not they're able to get anything out of this. Well, in the first half, Captain, it was that perimeter defense of South Carolina that was really, really stingy. Let's see if they can duplicate that. Rebound, Keyshawn Bryant. Here's Campbell. Mike Coetzer. Now Lawson to Bryant. Bryant for three straight away. Too strong. Rebound, falls down to Stony Brook as Latimer has it yeah, for the Seawolves. Don't know whether that was the shot Frank Martin and the Gamecocks wanted by Keyshawn Bryant. He's more of a slashing driver, not really a guy that's going to come off picks and knock down three, especially when you're trying to tie the game. And that's Latimer why, for three. And that's why, because you give, the other you give the team another opportunity to come down and extend on their lead, and that's what happened a few moments ago. Eight points now for Latimer, and then on the other end, underneath it's Mike Coetzer. The last time they played this Coetzer was seven. They sped Stony Brook up and made him shoot a quick three. Probably was one of the quicker shots they've taken all game long. Now they're back at their pace, very deliberate, very intentional. Two possession ball game and get the shot that they want. This Underneath. is the pace that they play at. They want to be methodical, want to be intentional. Um, Olanayi with 14 points now. There's a defensive rebound for Stony Brook. Latimer, right side, wants another three. Yes. And the freshman has it dialed in 
Back-to-back threes for Latimer, and it's back to a six-point Stony Brook lead, making a nine-point Stony Brook lead, 79-70 to over Carolina. In Auburn men's basketball at 11.30 Eastern, 10.30 Central. The SEC Now team is set to recap all the hoop games and talk more about the latest football news around the conference. No one covers the SEC like we do. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. It is Stony Brook 79, South Carolina 70, 3.34 left to play, and Captain Stony Brook on an 8-2 run since South Carolina cut the lead to three. And Lattimore has been really, really good shooting the basketball. And, uh, he had 15 points against George Washington, but in his first two exhibition games, he combined to shoot 13, three, make 13 three-pointers in the first couple of games. So he's a guy that knows how to, how to shoot the basketball. But three numbers stand out for me in this game right now. Offensive rebounds, Stony Brook has 20. Also, second, second chance points. Uh, Stony Brook has 24 to South Carolina 14. Fast break points. Stony Brook 11 to South Carolina 4. South Carolina not getting enough easy opportunities at the basket. Miles Latimer with 11 points. Now Stony Brook with four players in double digit scoring. Latimer, Ochefu, Olanai, and Yaboa. Yaboa leading all scores with 24 for South Carolina. AJ Lawson with 20, and Trey Campbell with 12 points. And in the second half, Stony Brook is shooting 67% from the three. So they're making some three-point shots, and they all are coming from the dribble drive penetration. I say for three. Big three-pointer there for the Chilean, Felipe Hase. It's a two-possession game now, 79-73 with a three-pointer in effect. Under three minutes to go. South Carolina beaten again. It's been the recipe for Stony Brook. Space you out, dribble drive, collapse the defense and drop it off. And defensively, South Carolina has not found the answer. And I think Frank Martin and his staff, uh, the way they're looking right now tells the story. <laughs> Especially assistant coach Perry Clark, he looks just flabbergasted. Well, it's his, <laughs> it's his scout. And uh, many times as an assistant coach, you always want to make sure when it's your scout that your team is prepared. And uh, right now, he's not a, not a happy camper. Uh, any assistant coach wants to always make sure uh, that game that he scouts is, is successful. Quickly down the court. Is Cornish, nothing there. Carolina and A.J. Lawson, and Lawson is mugged. Garcia thought he had all ball. You know, Lawson has probably been the one guy offensively that's played with any type of assertiveness. He's been the one guy offensively that's played with any type of aggression. And Chris Silver, who's the team's best player, got to have a better stat line than what he has tonight. And it's going to be difficult for this team to have any success if Chris Silver only gets two rebounds. And he didn't get that second rebound uh, until uh, 13 minutes ago. He's been on the bench the last 10 minutes and 18 seconds. And Frank has decided that he's going to go with the guys that are playing the hardest, the guys that are giving the most effort. And Chris Silver is amongst that group right now. A.J. Lawson missing both free throw shots. And a foul. Uh, Felipe Hase there. That's his third. 81 74, seven point advantage here for Stony Brook with two minutes, 30 seconds left. This is a good Seawolf team. It is, and we knew uh, a little bit about them after you were able to come from a 22 point deficit against George Washington. You were going to come to Columbia with some confidence. We not only saw the confidence early on, but we're seeing the confidence down the stretch the last two minutes of this game. And they feel like, and they're playing like they're supposed to win this basketball game. Yaboa with a double-double tonight. There's a good slash to the basket for Lawson. He's got 23 now, the freshman. 
He's been keep the Carolina low, in this ball game. He's been a long bright spot offense before this team. Two possession game. Eighteen seconds of the shot clock. The possession will remain with the Seawolves. They'll inbounds underneath their basket. Another opportunity for South Carolina to get a loose ball if they haven't. They haven't gotten more opportunities to. They, 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 they haven't taken advantage of those loose ball opportunities like Stony Brook. Jeff Bowles calls a timeout. When will we see Chris Silva reemerge in this ballgame? Um, with two minutes and three seconds to go, um, I'd be very surprised if Chris Silva re-enters this basketball game. I think Frank has made up in his mind that he's going to go with the guys that are playing with the most effort. And you know, for his seniors, for his veterans, for his experienced guys, uh, Frank possesses um, high expectations for them. And uh, some of the things that we've seen from Silva tonight uh, certainly aren't going to be accepting to a Frank Martin, which is why he's decided to uh, go without Chris Silva the last 10 minutes of the game. Now, he did pick up his fourth foul with 10, uh, with 10 minutes to go, uh, but Frank decided, has decided not to uh, put him back into the basketball game. Your leading rebounders for Carolina tonight, Justin Minaya with seven. Can't happen. Uh, Justin Minaya has seven rebounds in between Chris Silva and Mike Kosar. Mike Kosar, by the way, still has zero rebounds. So between Mike Kosar and Chris Silva, the two most experienced post players, the two guys that you got to rely on, the two guys that you got to depend on when it comes to post presence, two rebounds, two minutes to go. You can't get it done with those numbers. Three-pointer, left iron. Follow through, not there. Felipe Hase comes down with his eighth rebound of the game. That's a big rebound for South Carolina with under two minutes to play here in a two possession ball game. Carolina down 81-76. South Carolina in the double bonus, Stony Brook in the bonus. A.J. Lawson, kick out. Trey Campbell dialing up a three, too strong. Manaya, big rebound, trying to feed Hase underneath. He'll kick it out, Coatser. You gotta go, a minute and 20 set, 27 seconds. 19 seconds of the shot clock as it was knocked away out of bounds to Carolina. Yaboa knocking it out of the hands of Trey Campbell, but last touch by Yaboa. As O'Cherry with four fouls comes back on for Stony Brook. And two guys that I normally think would be in the game at the end for South Carolina as the season progresses. Two seniors, Hassan Gravit and Chris Silver, both are forced to watch from the bench. A.J. Lawson for three. No, Manaya is there for the rebound and the putback. Big bucket and a big offensive board for Manaya. Manaya has nine rebounds. 81-78 as the crowd comes alive with 102 to play. Big defensive possession for South Carolina right here. A three-point game, one possession game. Stony Brook has had his way getting the shots that they wanted in the second half. Cornish. Now to Olani. Olani and Olani. Put Stony Brook ahead by five with 41 seconds to go. Now 39. A.J. Lawson, Trey Campbell. Trey Campbell, deep three. Yes, count it for Trey Campbell. That's a huge three-pointer for the... Graduate transfer from Georgetown. Now Carolina going with a full court press. Twenty-two seconds left. A two-point ball game. Blocked away. Coats are trying to keep it in. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Too strong. Hase comes down with a rebound. Seven seconds to go in a two-point game. AJ Lawson. With three seconds, Manaya for three, it's blocked away, and Stony Brook will walk away from the Colonial Life Arena with a big victory over Carolina, 83 to 81. What a wild, wild finish at the Colonial Life Arena tonight. This is one confident team out of upstate New York, and I tell you what, America East, watch out, Stony Brook, 
as a team to take notice. Well.